Your skin is your largest organ. Yes, it is a barrier between you and the world, but it is not like plastic. It doesn't just repel everything. It actually absorbs things. What you put on your skin often gets into your body. Also, your skin is a great place to display your health. Bad skin oftentimes means poor health. Oftentimes it means poor gut health. Now, here's the deal. Natural skin tends to be the healthiest, but in modern societies, we're exposed to pollutants, makeup, products, lots of different things that are on our skin. We wash ourselves every single day. Skincare products try to replace the natural things found in skin with chemicals, and they don't do a good job at all. So when trying to take care of your skin, number one, just be healthy on the inside. And number two, if you put something on your skin, consider it goes in your body. So make sure it's natural. That's typically the best way. What do you think the the percentage is comparing those two, right? Like do you like someone has really bad skin? Um, do you think uh, uh, what how much greater of a percentage do you think that has to do with what they're intaking versus what they're putting on? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, like because like I, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty good look. At, here's the deal: there's 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 re evolutionary reasons why we look at there's certain things we look at that we in, that we just naturally will judge someone's health off of, mm. whether they're accurate or not. Teeth, teeth is a big one. one. I know that. If you got bad teeth, look, it's it, it's hard to find someone attractive who got really bad teeth. Why? That probably meant they were had poor health, and it they probably were going to die. That for mm. most of human history, skin is the other one. Your skin tends to display your health. Uh, what about it, smell. It could have meant it's a bad smell. Would have, yeah. it, that's another one. Totally. I, I judge right? people on smell. <laughs> that's totally I judge true. people on smell. Definitely. Do you want people. to others, Justin? I don't know yeah, if you want to. I'm just saying. If you want to do that. But uh, but yeah, skin is the other one. And um, what's interesting is the regulations on skincare products are nowhere near the same regulations that we put on products that we ingest. It's like there's all these regulations that we have to follow when we eat something or ingest something, but because we put it on our skin, it doesn't have to follow the same, the same guidelines. When in fact, I mean, you put stuff on your skin, it gets into your body. You know, there's xenoestrogens that are found in lotions and perfumes and, and skincare products and makeups. These are things that act like estrogens in the body. So they have hormonal kind of effects. They can have effects um, on your health. Um, there's things that can cause inflammation. And then most skincare products, they, what they do is they strip the skin of its natural oils, which are protecting and healthy. So it's like, get rid of all the stuff you naturally have. And then they aim, they, they attempt to replace those things with chemical mimics. Mm -hmm. uh, when natural is, is oftentimes better. Some of the healthiest skin you'll ever see, by the way, is if you look at people that live in like natural societies. Uh, what's that, that, who was that one dentist, Doug, that traveled the world? Weston Price. Weston, Weston A. Price. Price. Yep. You guys ever read about this guy? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. So he traveled the world looking at people's teeth, and he was shocked to see that people, that modern hunter-gatherers at the time, so people who didn't brush their teeth, didn't take care of the teeth, teeth. They had these really the straight, nobody needed braces, nobody got their wisdom teeth pulled out, nobody had cavities, really straight, perfect teeth. And he was like, holy cow, it must be the diet. It must be their right. diet. He also made observations about people's posture and about their skin. And it, they all had, nobody had like all these, you know, acne and terrible skin and stuff like that. Yeah, those are some of the pictures he took uh, of people. And now he, he came up with some theories and a lot of them are, are pretty accurate, like diets where you're, you're eating meat and natural dairy. You're avoiding lots of heavily processed grains. Yeah, they didn't even like have that. Crest toothpaste or anything. No, they yeah. had nothing. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah. They had nothing. But yeah, with skin, it's like... Um, you know, look at skincare products, look at the back, look at the ingredients. And it's a, it's a chemical smorgasbord of just crap. I feel, I feel like women have been onto this for a while. It's like slowly making it to men. I feel like well, now, like I think too, they've been inundated the most with like products and things yes. for their face and makeup and lotions. And I, I don't know, maybe it's a, as a result of like, maybe their skin is rea more reactive because it's been so many years of like putting all this stuff. Well, bro, you put makeup on, even if you put, don't, you don't put that much makeup on, you put on like the basics, like you're covering your face and stuff every day. And then every you day. gotta wash it off. So then you strip your skin and now you've removed some of its natural oils. I well, mean, isn't too, okay. So like antibacterial soap uh, versus regular soap. Right? Yeah. And so like just the skin itself has to have that healthy relationship with the uh, bacteria. And like, if we're just like, you have a microbiome on your skin. Yeah. You know, it's what's funny about, anti you know, what's funny about soap. All soap kills bacteria. 
antibacterial soap contains an antibiotic, a topical antibiotic. Does it really? It sits on your skin. Wow. Yeah. Which we know Tri- what that I does think, to your gut. I think triclosan. Maybe Doug could look it up. What are the most pop? Doug, look up the most popular antibacterial bars of soap. Yeah, I think triclosan is the chemical, the antibacterial or antibiotic type chemical. But oh, so all soap, what it does is it 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 um, allows water to to break the 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 bacterial cells apart. So that's what water does. So if you ever have like oil on on water, and then you put like a bar of soap. You ever do this when you were a kid? Put like a drop of soap, and it makes the oil yeah it goes push away or whatever. So um, the way soap works is it kind of breaks the it, it breaks down the film and allows the water to go and permeate and then it destroys the bacteria or the virus. All soap does this. We've been using soap forever. They you know thousands of years ago they just made soap off of ash and animal fat leftovers from cooking. All of it's antibacterial. Antibacterial soap contains antibiotics that you leave on your skin. And it lingers afterwards. Yeah, that's crazy. And yeah, it's really crazy. Okay, so it looks like there's, it doesn't look like there's a lot of body soap anymore that does it. It looks like all dish soap. It's all hand soap. Uh, yeah, hand all soap. hand soap uh-huh. and dish soap. I think, look up triclosan, Doug. Uh, it might be banned now, but that was one of the more common ones mm-hmm. uh, that, that you would find. That was the, wasn't that the big thing with Safeguard? That was like their big pitch, huh? Yeah. Because that was the idea is that not only did it clean you, but then it guards you from the bacteria afterwards. Yeah. Is Dude, that what- Google triclosan just to read up on it. Because uh, I'm pretty sure that's the most common. Uh, by the way, they'll put that in toothpaste. They'll put it in all kinds of different products. Wow, really? Yeah. So it's like an anti, Sneaky. it's an antibiotic essentially. All right. What does that say right there on the right? The drug. Triclosan is an antibacterial. Do you see that on the on the right there, Doug? Yeah. Uh, what, read can that. You see it? Yeah. So triclosan is an antibacterial and an antifungal agent present in some consumer products, including toothpaste, soap, detergents, toys. And surgical what? cleaning treatments. Toys. That's awesome. That's why I don't want to give my kid toys. Yeah. <laughs> That's strange. Why. That's why. That's why Between that and the lead cup, I'm always, trying, I'm, trying, I'm always trying to throw his toys away and not let him have toys all the time. Yeah, we, we, we believe in natural toys. Like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> sticks we show, and rocks. We, hey, you show up at your house, it was, like, it was like rocks and sticks over here, some mud. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. So you don't want to uh, drop an, an atom bomb on your skin and destroy everything. There's a balance of bacteria on your skin. When you throw that balance off, that's when you get skin problems. Mm-hmm. And anti- stuff like triclosan just destroys everything. So it's used in deodorant, soaps, shower, uh, shower gels. It's mainly a preservative too. Um, but here's something interesting. It is an endocrine disrupting chemical. There it is. Mm-hmm. So if people wash their hands with it. It goes into the water supply. And it ends up like low levels end up in the in your water. Yeah, so why water. even bother? You know, like, <laughs> just like avoid it. Well, yes. I mean, so I mean, it, really, it's like pay attention to the stuff you do. By the way, another category are feminine hygiene products. The like the cotton and stuff in like tampons, they can be treated with all kinds of shit versus like cotton you would use on clothes or something like that. So, and women put it in their body. Their body absorbs stuff too yeah, that way. Course. So like all these things we get, um, you know, basically all these chemicals yeah. we're being inundated with. Assaulted with them. And your liver has to detox them mm. and it causes hormone issues. And Now you know. all of them fly under the radar because in, individually they pass the test. But it's collectively what I think is what's happening to us. Right? I'll give like, you an example. You get enough products that yes. barely pass the test. I'll give you an example. Do you know what one of the most common uh, overdoses with uh, medicines is in America? Aspirin or Tylenol, right? Uh, isn't Tylenol, acetaminophen. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So acetaminophen is the generic uh, name mm-hmm. for Tylenol. Do you know why? Because somebody will take NyQuil and then they'll throw Tylenol on top of it, not realizing that they both contain or acetaminophen. Or Alka-Seltzer too, right? Or alka seltzer aspirin. Oh, that's aspirin. Yeah, that's aspirin. That's the, so they'll not know that they took one medication that's got four drugs. Like, like yeah. uh, NyQuil's got, uh, you know, acetaminophen. It's got a cough suppressant. It's got a decongestant in there. And then they'll take Tylenol on top of it. Mm. And now they've just exceeded the safe dose of acetaminophen. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then they get liver issues, failure. They go to the hospital. Oh, my God, what just happened? Um, and they have to treat you or sometimes in rare cases you die. So- Yes, they'll they'll there'll be an FDA like okay here's the safe amount of X chemical, so you'll have one product that has that chemical and you'll use it as suggested. So you won't exceed. Which by the way, we could argue whether or not you know is that still a safe amount because did they test it over the course of five years, ten years, whatever? It's always like a short period. But forget that. Let's just pretend that that is indeed the safe level. Well, then you use this product that's got it. 
Then you use this product that also has it. Then you use this other product that has it. Then you go hug your wife who's got perfume on. Mm. That perfume has that product. Mm -hmm. Then you keep playing with the toy or whatever. Oh, that's also got yeah. this other couple. Then you eat your food out of a container yeah. that also has. So now you've quadrupled or you know exceeded by four times. And the, do that every day. Yes. Right. Yeah. Touch a receipt that you get from the register and that's got some shit in it. Right. So yeah. isn't that the worst? Isn't that the worst one? Dude, crazy amount. I think I remember, I remember Max, Max Lugavere, Lugavere yeah. did a thing on that, right? Like I never that, gets receipts now. <laughs> I always get all with Doesn't he have like. You're going to hand it to me sometimes. I'm like, oh no, I'm cool. Yeah, he has like <laughs> tweezers or something. <laughs> like he <laughs> grabs it after and just like puts it in the trash. Uh, no receipt, please. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No receipt. They actually ask you now most places, you know, it's rare. Like uh, it's rare that like they give you the receipt automatically. They normally almost ask every time. That's now. good for them too, right? Saves yeah, money. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> receipt, I mean, not yeah. cool. So, I mean, I mean, along these lines, like, um, you know, one of the companies we work with, Caldera, if you look at their products, they don't, they work with natural things. Mm -hmm. They work with uh, ingredients that come from seeds or fruits or plants. That's not always, uh, by the way, I know people are like, oh, some plants are poisonous too. Yeah, that's true. Okay, but these are all things that have been used for so long. We generally know that they're pretty good. Yeah. And the goal of Caldera products is not to uh, cover up or strip or replace. It's to enhance. So, you know, for example, their oil, we're, none of us here were skincare product people. Okay. Caldera approached us mm -hmm. and that their product literally sat on our shelf for, I don't know how long. Right. Finally, I don't remember who it was. It's like, Hey, try this out. Come on. This company yeah. wants to work with you. I have oily skin. Uh, Justin's got dry skin. Yeah. Yours, you have uh, psoriasis. Yeah. All of us use the same product. All of us had uh, good results. And that's when we became converts. Why? Because it works with your natural well, skin. You, yeah. You know, it's funny is like, um, I don't know if they sought us out because we're handsome, but <laughs> we're not. I just <laughs> want to make a comparison here. So you got Mario Lopez, right? You got Frank Grillo. Yes. You have like all these other Hollywood, like superstar. They just picked actors. up our buddy, Michael Trinnell. Michael too. Trinnell, He's handsome super handsome fuck. guy. Another handsome you know what I'm saying? Guy. I mean, this, the, what does that know? say about us? You know, are we in that category? Look, I'm guys? not going to be the turd in the punch bowl, but maybe <laughs> they started with us. No, no. Maybe the board meeting was like, 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 like we got all these handsome guys, but we got to connect to the average guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We, we gotta get some, in that market. Can we find some averages? They know, did just reach yeah. out to my boy Chris Nagibi, and he's not very cute. You know, oh, okay. so that's oh, oh, oh wow! <laughs> he's shout really out good to find shout out to Chris, yeah. but he is it? attractive. Yeah. Yes. There's Smart, there's a difference. Handsome. What did that say, Doug? Oh, about the BPA oh, and, yeah. and receipts. Yeah, oh, yeah, we were talking about that already. Yeah, yeah. So, do you think receipts have to follow? Any of the same regulations that... Yeah, because no one's thinking about eating it or rubbing it on your yeah, skin. But you do touch it. Oh, yeah, of course. It does go on your skin. Yeah, no, of I course. Know. All right, today's program giveaway is MAPS Aesthetic. If you want that program and you want to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this video. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Now, everyone else, we got a sale going on right now with some workout programs. MAPS Cardio, 50% off. The Shredded Summer Bundle, 50% off. And the Bikini Bundle, 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. By the way, what we're talking about right now is one of the leading theories as to why uh, testosterone levels in men have been declining for decades. And it seems to match the, per, the, the you know, how, how many of these chemicals are permeating hmm. our markets and are being used. So like the more, 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 more have come into the, to circulation, by the way, you know, this is not this is gonna I'm gonna sound like a Debbie Downer. Some of these are forever chemicals. Like, <laughs> yeah. like they don't Come that's on. it. You don't get rid of them. They're you know, forever. diamonds are forever, yeah. And so is BPA. Yeah, yeah. No, like, like they don't go away. BPA's like forever. that's it, that's it. We're done. Some of them take a long time. At least give me a ring. Like glyphosates, I think if we stopped using glyphosates right now, I think it would take a hundred years or something like that for them to be. I feel sorry for those real. people at Costco. They are constantly grabbing people's yeah. receipts, they're checking them. And so BPA, which is on those thermal receipts, receipts is uh, a concern because of possible health effects on the brain and prostate gland of fetuses, infants, and children. Uh, link between BPA and increased blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Awesome. Jesus. So, it shrink so I just want to bum everybody out today. That's yeah. the other thing, too. Yeah, They're finding that taints are shrinking. People's yeah, taints what? are shrinking. Yeah, I remember we read that. Yeah. That your taints are shrinking? I don't remember. Yeah, the, the, the distance between Oh, wait, I boys. do remember that. I do remember Balls that conversation. And, that's right. Yeah. yeah. The but, taint. Well, yeah. yeah, bunch. bunch. That's the technical term for it. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, the distance is shrinking. Well, you were talking about Caldera, and we're talking about our buddy Michael Trinnell. That reminds me of our other partner with uh, Creatures of Habit. He reached out to me. I talked to him um, yesterday, 
And for, first of all, I reached out to him first and said, dude, you have to try those cookies that we got sent over. The, the Whoever it was, I forgot. And I think we shouted him out the first time when they, they sent over. Yeah. the They were already pre-made and they were shipped to us. And then we kind of threw them in the refrigerator. It was like, all right. But I actually followed the recipe, put them in the, the freezer for two hours like you're supposed to and had them. And they are unbelievable. And so I was talking to him about that. And then he told me that we're fine. He just did a, a he was taste testing the product that him and I have been working on for like over a year. And I kind of almost forgotten about it because this is I a secret, right? We can't tell anybody. Yeah. I can't tell anybody what it is yet. Cause it's well, not, you a guys get all these products. It's not, right? <laughs> they don't want, because cheese flavored oatmeal doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah, Nobody's yeah. hitting me up, dude. Yeah, <laughs> hey, hey, check out the new creatures of habit, blue cheese. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, Anyways, what is why that, haven't Adam? we got a cheese sponsor? Well, yet? we'll see, dude. You ought to reach I'm out to that moon it. cheese that I sent over to you. The it's high small protein. margins, bro. It's not oh yeah. Moon cheese. Cheese is not a big, maybe, huh? Yeah. You know yeah. what those those bags of like Parmesan crisps? That's like a high protein. I love them. Snack. Yeah. No, I wish I could eat. No, them. look at the have Doug pull up the the moon cheese is like super high yeah, protein. I know. Yeah, yeah. Did you check that out? Listen, people don't know this. It's if like you can eat dairy, for me, you're fucking lucky. I wish I could have dairy. Easiest yeah. source of protein and healthy snack ever. Ever. Yeah. It's so easy. The fat will sneak up on you pretty quick though, too, though. So before it's like eating almonds or eating things like that, where you're just like, oh, it's healthy. It's healthy protein. Well, I'm always trying to yikes. Bulk, so. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. so can I guess but, what flavor yeah, you're gonna no, do? No, don't do no, that. No, no, it, I don't know. Oh, I'm gonna guess. Oh, yeah. yeah, but then what am I? I can't say it. That's okay. You oh, just okay, do so a little hand signal it, yeah, below yeah, the camera. Yeah. Oh, all right. Let me get because I know <laughs> the stuff you like. Some cotton candy tasting. Yeah, or bubble gum. It's either cotton candy or bubble gum. Is it one of those stupid flavors? No, Jolly Rancher. When 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 my Mike and I, when flavor. Mike and I first met, and I first fell in love with Creatures of Habit, and oh, I thought you were going to say fall in love with Mike. So, no, and and his product. <laughs> one of the things I said to him, like, because they got, I don't know how many total flavors they have. They probably have what six, like six seven, or, yeah, maybe more. Not even somewhere around. I there, like right? the maple. I think was, you know what they did? They actually did a. I didn't even know he did like a like a little mocha run on one. I didn't even oh, know that. Ooh, yeah, no. Anyway, my wheelhouse. When he did that, I was like, I was like, this is. So I used to make these oatmeals myself so especially during competing it was my staple first meal early in the morning yeah, protein I, scoop oatmeal yeah nuts, yeah and I, and I did all kinds of stuff chia seeds and nuts and walnuts yeah. and all i mean i i mixed different stuff Sprinkle and tried different flavors chocolate peanut butter <laughs> yeah uh blueberry all different fruits and banana like and so a lot of them he's already kind of made but the one that was my favorite that i made always he he doesn't have anything like it and so that was why i was like you have to make this this is like this was, of all the oatmeals that I mixed and made, like this was my favorite flavor. I think I overheard you talking about the flavor. I'm not going to yeah. say it, but so, that's a good, but he, that's a good July, choice. July, it'll be here to launch. He's actually already sending me. Is it co-branded? Is it going to say? Anything yeah, yeah, it's co-branded. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you know how they have the big writing on there, and then in the, it'll say Mind Pump on the oh, delicious the center of it. So we'll we'll co-brand it. Right. But uh, yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm super excited about. I want them to do. I want them to do a high sugar one. You, you, ever, have, you ever put a shit ton of sugar in, in oatmeal? <laughs> yeah. It's delicious. <laughs> it's really good. I know it's it not doesn't healthy. Need it. I feel it like that's conflicting. It. Huh? Yeah. It totally is. Bit. I'm yeah. Not, yeah, I'm not saying something healthy here. Right. Wow, look at the macros on that. What is that, Doug? The, the cheese? The yeah, the moon cheese, cheese, 170 calories. You got 11 grams of protein. It's in. not too bad. Not too bad, huh? Not too bad. For, for, how, for, for how a big of a serving. Yeah. Uh, for a 14 pieces. So I don't know how, how many, many grams of fat. So I told you guys the good rule of thumb, right? When you're when you're Squeeze, figuring out fourteen free, grams of when you're fat. choosing so keto, a, that's a keto snack right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, because it's more yeah, higher it's fat. fat. I don't yeah. think there's any carbs, right? Uh, no, none to speak of. Yeah, that's a keto snack. It is, I think it's actually marketed as a keto snack. Is it? Yeah, I think they do market it like a keto snack. But uh, remember, I told you guys like a good rule of thumb when you're looking at something for the audience, like when you're yeah, looking percentage for percentage of protein. Yeah, the percentage of that's protein. that's more of a fat snack. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So that's why I brought up the, the almonds thing. It's like eating. You gotta be careful. It's like eating. Yeah. You know, you justify. Oh, Calories that's a good snack. Get away from you. Yeah. Low carb, no sugar. When I was younger, <laughs> same with nuts. It was yeah. That's what he said. Yeah, when I was younger, I because I was like, if anything had protein in it, then that that was good. Mm -hmm. And I remember first off, oh, peanut butter's got protein, right? But I disregarded the fact that it's got a good fat or whatever. <laughs> so I would try to eat thirty. Fat. Grams Calories. of protein and peanut butter. You know how much fucking pre pre peanut butter that is? Yeah. And then I remember reading that like a pound of pasta, I think had like 35 grams of protein. No, dude. The you know what I used to eat those giant cans of raviolis. Oh. The 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 chef processed boys, one. The, yes, oh. dude. Look at a large family yeah. size one. That hurts my Italian heart. And it hits uh. and it, it gets like I don't know if I remember right. How did you like, feel afterwards, dude? I was 20. 
So I felt like a champ. Yeah, or you yeah. just weren't aware of how yeah, shitty yeah. felt. Yeah, 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 <laughs> thirsty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you ever do that? So, so many preservatives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You ever do that? You eat thirsty. something garbagey and you're just like, why am I so thirsty? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. 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 Cotton mouth. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Disgusting. Just, uh, I, I used the water do, out so of you. So you eat a whole can of that because it had whole, 50 grams of protein? Yes. Yeah, that was exactly, and it was so good. It was easy. That was back in my, you know, bachelor living at my living at home like that. You just put it in a pot and warm it I up. I told right? you that and hamburger helper with ground turkey. Like, just I would get a pound of ground turkey. Okay, so, real, okay, so go ahead. I got the beef ravioli chef bar, bar yeah, boy yeah, yeah. RD. That's not a real uh, chef, by the way. Uh, the family uh, size. So I don't have that. I do have it by the cup it's though. Like so oh, okay. one cup has 220 calories. It has seven grams of protein. Yeah, that's nothing. That's the nothing. family so size. He would, he would five cups. Like, like four or five cups. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like five times that. So Doug, can you see for a second, because this feels very racist. Can you see if Chef Boyardee <laughs> was real or if Americans came up with a name to sound at a time? You know what I mean? That didn't even sound uh, Italian. Yeah, you know in a board We need an Italian oh, sounding slow name. Slow down, Aunt Jemima bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> fucking here we go, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Aunt Jemima was real. Yeah. 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 I think she was. I don't think she I was. I think that's like what all those. Really? With all so those nice he lady. is fictional. So I knew it. Along with Betty Crocker, of course, Aunt Jemima, yeah. who's been canceled or yeah. removed. Don't get, uh, don't get oh. Chef so, Brody canceled now, guy. <laughs> Come on. That's racist. Yeah. You know why Italians won't cancel? Chef Boyardee, do you know why? Mm. We don't give a shit. We're not freaking sensitive. Relax, everybody. Yeah, well. Who cares? I don't, I, I don't think, hey, come up I, don't, I don't think it was even a, a, a black person just that got pissed off about Aunt yeah. Jemima. It was, it was some fucking, people. some Karen that yeah, got pissed off about it. Let's be know, honest, dude. Come I on. I got to deal with Lucky Charms. So. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Unlike the friend. Oh, okay. Wait. He is real. It says it's yeah, real? Yeah, I found something that he is real. Oh, oh, yeah. oh okay. he's real. Okay, now hold you, on a second. Here's the racist. the company with his brothers in 1928. All right, here's the racist part. You why, ready? Is that, why? Here's the racist part. His last, now that's what makes sense. Look how his name is supposed to be spelled. B-O-I-A-R-D-I. Biardi. How is it, how is it spelled? B-O-I-A-R-D. They spell it B-O-Y-A-R-D. Boyardi. That's awesome. <laughs> Boy, already. That's like yeah. when somebody says Cusladilla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some, like, some Southern guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a boy, already. These Americans are never going to be all say this right. Let's spell it out hey, like this. Yeah. Did you know that that was a common thing? So, okay. So you guys know how my last name, right? My last name is DiStefano. Yeah. It's D-I space capital S-T-E-F-A-N-O, right? That's how right. you're supposed to spell my name. Yeah. When I was a kid, my mom made me spell it with no space and no capital S. Now, this is because back in the day, in the 70s, when because my mom came here when she was four, when you'd fill your name out, especially on legal forms, you couldn't put a space in your last name because they didn't recognize that in America. Mm. So back in the day, a lot of Italian, there's a lot of names, DeSantis, together. DeSantis or DeStefano or whatever, names like that, that- D'Angelo. Yes, okay. where they actually, they smashed it together and took the capital down and they mm. changed the I to E. So like DeSantis, like D'Angelo. Would be oftentimes you'll see DeSantis with an E. The yeah. real spelling was D-I space. Mm. So there's Interest, a lot. Oh, interesting. Or an Italian would come aboard, come ashore. This was way back. You're looking at the like uh, turn of the century, right? Or late 1800s, early 1900s. They would say their name. Then the person would write, would write out, how it, it out how it sounded. Yeah. So that's like Boyardee. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 What's your name? Yeah. Yeah. Normal. Boyardee. Oh, B-O-Y-R-D-E. Yeah. Interesting, Close right? enough. Oh, that's I know. Good. That's Interesting. Great. Hey, that's you guys great. want to hear something I just learned that's crazy? Mm-hmm. I can't believe this is true. It is true. Maybe Doug can, can fact check me because I looked this up. This is the wildest thing I've ever read. Not, not craziest, but it's pretty close. During the 90s, okay, North Korean leader Kim Jong-il and his son Kim Jong-un used fake passports and they went to Disneyland. What? Random they went fa- to Disneyland. What, when Random was this? Fact. What In the 90s. 90s? The passports issued That's by the Brazilian amazing. embassy. So they got them in by a Brazilian embassy in Prague in 1996. And they, you, you, they're showing pictures of it. It featured a young Kim Jong-un as Joseph Pwag <laughs> and his father, Kim Jong-il, as Lee Jong Choi. Uh, and Japanese media claimed that, this, that they used this to go to wow. Disneyland. Yeah. Dude. Is that funny? I thought you were going to bring That was Tokyo up- Disneyland. Tokyo Disneyland. Yeah, yeah. Tokyo oh, okay, Disneyland. okay. That Still. makes more sense. Still yeah. Disneyland. But yeah, that's funny. I thought you were going to bring up the uh, the myth around him like shooting um, 
so many hole in ones in the golf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you hear about that? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, there what? was this like uh, the stories that legend they tell their people floating around that he just was like, "Is that real? Or is that just bullshit that we make up because we think it's funny?" No. They, they, the whole thing that he doesn't shit too, right, or something like that. He does. He does it. He oh, works so hard. No, that's that, all real. That he man. absorbs all of his food. He doesn't poop. This is the kind of propaganda like that they're putting out there. But the golf one was funny because that they're trying to push that outward, like in in the press and like say like he's just a natural. Yeah, the first time he played golf, he got did like, you guys X amount of holes in one. Speaking of yeah. golf, did you see what happened in the golf world with the LIV? Yes. What, what's what, new what with that? that, bro? They LIV and PGA merged. <gasps> oh, what they won? Look, look it up, Doug. They won. Yes, dude. What? Wait, wait. So, okay. so did LIV take them over or the opposite? So I don't know if it's a takeover or if it's just a pure merger or just some sort of a partnership they're yeah. doing right now. But I mean, at the beginning, you remember to. PGA was yeah. flexing hard. Like, yeah, sure. if you go over there, you're, you yeah. can All your never come back to PGA. And LIV yeah. was offering crazy money. Yes. Like half a and it was and starting money. to really get some traction. And I wow. think they saw the potential market share they were going to lose. It was like better, well, that's a smart strategy. better to join them or, you know, yeah, better to join them than to try and beat them, right? Boy, talk about a strategy. Man. That's crazy. If you're a really wealthy group of people to make a lot of money is to threaten a large organization with the intent of them trying to merge with you. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. kind of an interesting strategy. I mean, yeah. isn't that what they're kind of doing right now? Because they did it, they've done it with multiple sports. They're doing it with bodybuilding. They're doing it with all kinds of things like that. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's kind of the strategy. You wow. pointed out for me, Doug? Yeah. Uh, what so you got? I can give you the overview is they're uh, yeah. merging. Uh, so the they're PGA is going to remain kind of separate in that they're a non-profit apparently and okay. they're going to control their own so assets crazy. but they are PGA is a non-profit so they say why are we not a non-profit not profit we like actually help people too we like to profit I, I know we i'm sure PGA likes profit too yeah they don't look like they're struggling what to is pay the qualifications the you know? do you have to like limit you know your that profits? you guys know that Rolex is a non-profit also <laughs> shut your face <laughs> i swear to god what? look google it <laughs> rolex happening? is a non-profit <laughs> keepers of the another time. interesting fact about rolex where do you think that they were founded switzerland don't tell me it was hitler again no okay. uk really yeah i didn't know that why is that weird because it's supposed to be a swiss swiss oh, oh it is yeah, yeah. 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 is it breitling uh, uh british i don't know so. That's a the uh, that's a good that's a good guess. I don't know. So yeah, Rolex is technically a like nonprofit Cassio. company. See, Cassio. is that wild? What? Okay, wow. so what are they? I don't. Okay, we got to read. We got to figure. But they're out. extremely profitable. Make billions of dollars a year. Yes. So does that mean they don't? They pay less taxes? Uh, yeah. How does that work? Yeah, how do you how do become you a nonprofit? Executives and all that. Like, how does that all yeah. structure work? Like, what is that? How, what is that? Seems like a pretty cool loophole here the, they got going. i read up on it a long time ago and i, I don't remember I'm, i wish i had the we should be a non-profit we are helping people that's what i'm saying like we yeah. do a lot more good than rolex and pg and a does so i feel yeah. like we could get away with hmm. that better yeah dude yeah what's rolex interesting doing? they ain't helping people get healthy <laughs> stupid <laughs> isn't that wild though I, I remember reading that i was like oh, this is Flossing crazy that cannot be hey, possible talking about uh if you can't beat them join them we just incorporated uh ai in a way to help our customers and our our listeners too, yeah. where you can. So here's the deal: AI is it's becoming it's 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 here. But stay. our podcast is still human made. No, no, no. no. We're not going to ever be replaced uh, on purpose. Never, never right? say never. Right? Yes, we might say be right now. It's never human never, made. Yeah. It's authentic. I mean, who knows, right? But we'll never choose to do that. But what well, we how did, embarrassing is it when like we get replaced by AI and it's better, way better. Yeah, it's way and we better. know it. We listen like, to it. Whatever. Yeah. Sal yeah. smarter. Justin way funnier and on point. Like my business actually goes up by stories. Just get like yeah, way better. AI Adam's hella cool. Yeah, wow. Wow, this wow. guy's yeah, way this guy's. cooler. So, uh, so here's what we did. We actually worked with a company. We created something called AskMindPump.com. You can go there. Now, here's why this is cool. First off, this is how it works. You go there and you ask it a question. Fitness, health related, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it goes through all of our episodes and it gives you the answer based off of what we would say. Yeah. What we've recorded already. Luckily, we have over how many episodes now? What are we at? 2,500 or something like that? Yeah, they're not entirely. The whole catalog's not in there. I think there's like maybe most of it, sixteen hundred or okay, so. Okay, so that's so, the recent stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so they started from now and went backwards. Yeah, so, yeah, it's so like, well over a thousand episodes. I'm glad they did yeah. that way of yeah. our more recent stuff. So, if you ask it, what's the best fat, lo fat loss workout? Uh, which program is best for me? Here's my goals: hormones, peptides, hormone, steroids, yeah, whatever, supplements. You name it. If everything. we've talked about it, it goes through all of those episodes. 
and it answers it based off of what we would say. And it's, we've tested it. It's relatively, it's not perfect yet. Yeah. But it's relatively it's pretty accurate. close. Do you know that it's it actually- It's like a mind pump eight ball, right? Yeah. Do you know yeah. that, you, have you I played with it enough to see that it talks in all of our voices yeah. differently? It's like, so if it's something that like one quote. of us said that's closest or more specific, it'll say, you know, Adam or Sal or yes. Justin. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's really cool. Have yeah, you asked cool. it, which is the most handsome host? Have you yeah, tried that yeah. yet? I did not. I've of tried course, that. Of course, that's something you would gave, try. Gave me conflicted so, information. I, yeah, I, I'm, see, Justin yeah. tried it. It yeah. gave you conflicting information, or it said it's not it programmed stuff. to do that. No, no it it this is not right. It didn't say that. No, no it I didn't do it. It yeah. says something. It's very. It political. should say you because we say you more on the show. <laughs> no, it's it. something political. No, 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 no. It, it says, "Oh, they joke and say this and that," but they're oh, it does. Yeah, yeah, it's very political. You should say Adam is the handsome face. Okay, says this is Sal speaking here. Oh, of course. As the host of Mind Pump, I can't pick favorites among my co-hosts. Very political. We all bring something unique to the table Boo. and we work together to provide our listeners with the best fitness and health information possible however Doug is the best looking shut up Doug. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're a liar I knew it. you're a liar that, that is the best hey answer. Doug ask it ask it who would win in a fight between all of us because I want to see if it here if it <laughs> If it's accurate, because we all know that you're the most dangerous person. And <laughs> so we should see. say that too, though, because we've said that about Doug. Yeah, like yeah. Doug yeah, will win because he carries a shiv. Yeah. shiv. That's what we've said that so That'd many times. That'd be hilarious. You will get shivved. Yeah. But anyway, you go on. So here's what's cool about it is that this is why we did this, okay? I, all joking aside, it's not because, you know, AIs, we think that it's going to replace us and we fear it. If it does, it does, whatever. It's because the fitness space is so full of total crap yeah. that we wanted a place to where if you want a, if you want if you have a question on fitness or nutrition or exercise you can now filter it through us yeah well and our bandwidth is only so far right, right. if you're going to message us individually this is just a, a quicker way to get a response yeah so instead of using google and getting 99% of crap trying to sell you stuff terrible information you're going to hurt yourself whatever it, you can filter it through us what's now. to say Doug? again very politically correct uh we don't condone violence, uh, like but it. we do have a lot of fun on the show. <laughs> and there's a lot more to that. That's a good, good, that's a wow. good AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very politically correct. This really I know it, covering I, our I've, tracks. Been using, I've been using it a lot. And, and to what Justin was saying, I think that that's the most useful tool. I mean, it, we were really good when the when the when the business was first starting. Um, I mean, we took a lot of pride in in answering everybody. There was yeah. a time when we actually when we had could, the ability. To yeah, when we had the ability to do it, it obviously got to a place, and it, which was inevitable that we get to a place where it's it absolutely impossible yeah. to reply to every DM and answer every right. everything. Right. right. So, I mean, and this is and the stuff that we would spend probably a good majority of our time answering is stuff that we've already said or talked about. And what's even better with this than it was in the past, like because you could just you know six months ago you could go to YouTube or go to Google and put you know, what does mind pump say about whatever? Yeah. And you would get like a whole episode That's right. where this now not only answers you as if it's one of us speaking to yeah. you and Quo it literally uses it. our, like the way we would communicate that information. So you get the AI answer. And then in addition to that, you get all the specific clips of mm -hmm. when we talk about it, so right? You can to, listen to the whole thing, right to where it's at. So you don't have to listen to an hour and a half episode to get this short, quick answer that you yeah, want. Handle, That's where sure. it's going to be. I just typed in, "Does Doug carry a shiv?" Yeah. And Adam says, "I haven't discussed whether Doug carries a shiv on the show, which is not entirely true." However, in episode twenty seventy eight, Doug mentioned that he was interested in pur purchasing a samurai sword. During his trip to Japan, oh, that's which is true. <laughs> See, we did the shift thing. I've talked actually about never said the shift thing. Way... That's always him. Ah, well, and two, those are old episodes. They, they are, are. so yeah. they might not have cataloged well, them. Now yet. it's cataloged on this episode. Yeah, so now, now it is. ask my pump will know that Doug carries. Doug yeah, carries they, the they're always too Prison evolving shift. it, right? So that's part he of what we yes, they're going to be constantly yeah. updating it with new yeah, so content. He made it out of a toothbrush and soap. And for the record, I don't actually carry a shift. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Sure you don't. Sure you Just don't. Watch guy. your neck. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> like, sneaky. Yeah. Hey, did you guys? He wears, see he wears he wears uh, magazines for like body armor and everything. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. yeah. Did you guys see the all the UFO news? I was surprised I didn't get. I sent it to you guys. I was like a little disappointed that I didn't. Yeah. Get so it what was what's the deal? I mean, so it was a whistleblower. Came oh, out. he said that we that government actually has gone out and retrieved beings and like he said a lot of shit. But then like literally, he was trying to confirm it all. Hours later, like they had to come back and recant a lot of Here's stuff. Here's the deal: if if it was that big like of a slime, secret, like whatever. If it was that big of a secret, he'd be dead. So this makes me. You know what the CIA and all these agencies it's all do? Misinformation. They, they do what's called counter disinformation. Disin they do yes. dis disinformation. So it's been confirmed. That Roswell, Area 51, 
that that's where they were developing the, the Blackbird, Blackbird yeah. spy plane. This was during the Cold War. It's the fastest plane ever made uh -huh. to spy on the Soviet Union. And in order to throw people off, because they'd be seeing shit, obviously they're flying this plane, mm -hmm. they came up with this fake story they planted in the newspapers that there was an alien craft. And it was literally, it's disinformation. So this feels something like that. Well, like, this are always they comes to up when like there's some major like court hearing or something for powerful people. It's like, oh, hey, look at we got alien stuff over here. That's true. Boom, Boom. every single, single time. I guarantee you there's something happening with you know a court case somewhere. Oh, yeah. somebody important. Interesting. What did you, What did you think of the? I I also sent over to you. You said you had already seen it and looked at it. Was the study that Lane's buddy did? Oh, on, I saw that on the fa failure on the failure training. Yeah, it's really not. So here's the thing. I, this is why we all talk about this. Why we don't like these studies on on muscle building. The study concluded that the closer you train to failure, the higher intensity, the more muscle you would build. But there's lots of other studies that show that um, that builds too much fatigue and actually is not as effective. And anybody who's been training for a long time will tell you that training to failure all the time is a very you'll get results quickly and then very quickly you'll stop off. getting results. Yep. So it's like one of those studies. It's like the studies that show eight to twelve reps builds the most muscle type of deal. Because what do they do? A sixteen weeks, you know, sixteen week study. Yeah. You know. Um, have People you, are not just working out for 16 weeks. Oh, you know? I was going to ask you, if it, and I didn't get a chance to read the study yet, but it was something about sucralose that just came out about it yeah. like messing with your DNA. No, it was what? there's uh, it was an in vitro study that showed that a, a, a chemical byproduct uh, was present in a single serving of sucralose, so what you would normally get like a diet, diet soda, uh -huh. that exceeded what the EU considered to be safe. Hmm. But it was in vitro. Was in um, and again, there's other studies. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, is it really? Mm -hmm. um, so who knows? But that study showed, oh, look, this chemical is present in higher amounts than the EU says mm. is, is, is supposed okay, to be. Okay, yeah, I just saw it floating around quite a bit. Yeah. Mm. By the way, you know what's interesting is, so studies are done in uh, two main ways. There's in vitro, that's in a Petri dish in a lab. In vivo, which is in animals <clears throat> or mm. humans. And then there's something called in silica, which is with AI or like computer learning. Predictive or like these run like So you'll put your watch. Remember um, when Iron Man in the Marvel movies, he would like, he'd like run experiments with the so with Like the digital computer. simulation or something? Yes. Okay. So they just, they just discovered a, an antibiotic that would treat these drug resistant antibiotics that are scaring everybody. And they did it in silica. They actually, huh. they have an algorithm in the AI. They, the AI knows the bacteria and then they, they gave it 7,000 possible, you know, chemicals and the computer picked the one that is most likely to prevent replication and boom. And it's like cheap, right? You don't have to test a bunch of different things. It could run the simulation and they could figure it and out. And they had right success away. and it worked? Yeah, they, 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 they're pretty sure this is going to work. So wow. next, that, next step will be, you know, in vitro and then in vivo. That would be but, crazy, if, yeah, if they start figuring that out with the, <laughs> running simulations on, on all the drugs. Oh, be crazy. the pharma industry is going to explode with it. Yeah. It's going to explode because they're going to be able to run every test yeah. uh, in silica. They'll be able to present so a, disease, much quicker. a disease model, and then the computer will be able to- I'm so curious to how- I was on a, a text thread with my my two best friends, and we were, we were taught- that It's funny because we've been talking about this for you know quite some time now. And it's now started. He was actually the one who shared me that episode that I share with you, the the, the Google executive and stuff like that, talking about. By the way, that was a terrifying interview. Well, but my point is super doom and that doom. we've been like talking about this a lot for like the last six plus months, right? And it's starting to make its way now to like my friends who don't pay attention to a lot of the stuff like that, and they're like tripping. I'm like, bro, I've been telling you guys this for <laughs> a while now to like. It's We've been sounding the alarm for a while. Yeah, and, and so now to see like people like that that don't really care or pay attention much that we're starting to even realize like this is going to like change my profession. I can see it. Like yeah. and it's gonna happen so far. And he like, you know, compared it to like the industrial revolution. Wow, like, that was so slow compared. I well, that's what I said. I said, yeah, now times 10 and a uh, hundred times faster. So yeah. think of like what that did do and how it changed the way ever we did work going forward. But that took over decades for it to evolve and really unfold where this is going to feel like an overnight situation. Like 
it's got to be knocking at our door right now where we're going to yeah. see within if this you were, year. If you, were a wagon, if you were a wagon wheel maker at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, you had your job till you died. Right. It wasn't your, it was your kids or their kids were like, hey, we're out of business. Like we got to make tires. This revolution is like, you're doing a job or you're going to school for a job. By the time you graduate, that job no longer exists. That's how fast this is happening. How crazy is that, right? Yeah. Thinking that your kid's going to college You want right to know now. what's funny? Hmm. So uh, we have this electrician that comes, super cool guy, really cool guy. Um, and he comes and works on the house sometimes. Anyway, I saw him the other day, he comes over and I see him and I, I just start cracking up and he's like, what's up, man? And I'm like, you know what's funny, bro? I said, do you, you, do you realize that your job, you're probably going to be the one of the last employed people because he's an electrician. Yep. And he goes, yeah, dude. He goes, I know, it's pretty funny. He goes, the demand for my job is like, like it's people are trying to come in now. Like getting handymans right now is like a real struggle. They're like on high demand. Yeah. Like, and then, you know, it's fun. Up. And then he goes, you know, I've been hearing about this. I said, oh yeah, really? And he goes, I don't want to let you know, but I listened to your show. I'm like, fuck off. He's like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> really? my house like six times. Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah. He listens to my show. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. But, uh, but yeah, he's, I was just telling him like, isn't that weird, bro, that your job, you're probably going to be one of the last it's employed like, it, to me it's just full circle yeah. you know it's uh we knowledge was the quest forever and now we've built something that's going to be better at us with knowledge it's, it's crazy that a lot of people don't see like they think like even like my, my 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 buddy's wife and him they were actually getting in an argument about it because he's like trying and she's a respiratory therapist and she's like everybody automatically defaults to like terminator ai robots walking around yeah. and going like that's not gonna like, i'm not gonna have some ai robot replace me doing that it's like no you gotta you're not thinking no. clearly mm -hmm. like all the steps systems. Yeah, yeah exactly all the steps and systems yeah. and application to medicine and stuff like that to give to people like that there's still going to be a human component to almost every profession but it w it'll only take one human to operate all these yeah, ai people did these ai tools yeah. and so it's going to make jobs that you know that humans were doing that took them say a couple hours to produce the result for whatever and ai is going to be able to to speed that up exponentially and now one person can run you know eight to ten to twenty however many ai tools and so oh it's absolutely going to disrupt that profession. you know it's already getting massively disrupted already right now copywriters already there's companies right Copywriters now. Copywriters and engineers. They're yeah. they're laying engineers off by the dozens because one engineer now can prompt you know, X amount of AI tools to write code that it would take X amount of engineers to do. So mm -hmm. yeah, some of these big massive, uh, I'm, I'm what, what I'm curious about is we obviously know like the huge, all the, we've been talking about layoffs for the last year or so is I wonder how many of these, you know, you know, Facebook and Google and all these execs saw the right. I mean, obviously they were doing it because of the recession and the direction we're going that you got to lay off and be, you know, smart companies that are massive ships. They have to start <sighs> that ahead of time before they really hurt heal them. But I wonder too, if part of it was recognizing too, like, Oh, we're not going to need these professions anyways in the next year or two. Mm. Imagine you're the guy working on it. You're like building like, Oh, I'm creating the thing that's going to make my job disappear. Yay. Yeah. Well, wasn't he in that video? <laughs> well, that interview was crazy. That was an ex Google exec. He was, he was a CEO. I think he was. Yeah. And his, he said, quote, this is the most dangerous thing we've ever done. And then he said, literally quote, we fucked up. Yeah. Like we're already late. And he said within months. This could happen see, within months. Yeah. yeah. He's like, we all agreed when we started this, do not put this on the open internet. And that's what they just they did. They just did. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> yeah, that's no, good. <laughs> Adopt or die type of situation. Right? That's kind of where we're at. It's good times. I'm going to find the optimism, dude. Yeah. All right. I'm going to tell you guys a funny, a funny story just to, to change the mood. You want to hear about this, uh, this guy who, what he did to get back at his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> it's kind of a genius, genius move. So in 2012, I read this this morning. I was dying. A Chicago man bought a car for $600 and he registered it in his ex-girlfriend's name. Okay. Then he parked it at O'Hare airport and racked up 678 parking tickets, totaling $105,000. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Did that, I guess that would work. That's huh? dirty. You just buy a car and someone You know, else the said, worst part about that's so actually brilliant because talk about a prank because like even when she does, even when she does get away with not having to pay with the, what she's going to have to go through. That's it. Yeah. To not the bureaucracy that she's got to get through to even like what a prove that's what not a gangster hers. move. Super gangster. That is a gangster move right there because yeah. that that is like there's there's no way around her that not becoming 
a massive headache for her. Yeah. She she's not gonna pay a hundred one hundred and something thousand dollars. No, she's gonna but, prove that he did this and whatever, but what a pain in the And to ass. back all that out on things like with the, like tickets and stuff yeah. like that. And then it's on your record until I mean, you fix look it. Look what happened to Doug and I. With wow. Doug and I, we still have yet to get I'm, we're now nine months into trying and repair our credit over a mishap on the banks messing up on the auto pill yes wow. my our, my credit still is not re fully repaired wow. from that just that one little blip that one and it wasn't our fault it yeah. was on the this bank on the system's fault and so and they've and, acknowledged it but still oh takes yeah forever. oh yeah wow. yeah they've all, totally acknowledged it but it's a, the amount it's because there's so many moving pieces in there it's just wow. like yeah crazy wow, that's annoying. so that's what sh she'll deal with something that times 10 wow wow you know one time i got one time so when i used Dang. to own my studio i used to have to pay this tax where oh, i remember what the what the what the name of the tax was but you have to pay a tax on the value of the equipment in your facility and i can't remember what that what the what it was i didn't was, know that yeah so i know there's a tax for everything so not only do i pay taxes on my income not only do i pay taxes on the you know that and the other but also the value of the equipment Every year, there was a there was a tax that I would pay. Now the total value of the equipment in my gym, in my because it was a small studio. So what did I have? Dumbbells. I had uh, you know a squat, you know a rack. I had this big cable machine called the Da Vinci, which was you know somewhat expensive or whatever. And the total value and it, some cardio machines. I had like four cardio machines. The total value I think was like forty thousand dollars or something like that for all that stuff. Well, I got a bill one year, and whoever the estimator was whoever worked for the city of, I was in Los Gatos, whoever worked for the city of Los Gatos m m put the decimal point in the wrong place. So I got a bill Pull the Doug. for 450. <laughs> 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 yeah. I I'll never is, live that one down. This I'm just, this good, every be. time I get chats, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, salt. Isn't that what happened in Office Space where he tried to do that? That, that yes. tried yeah, to get yeah, like yeah, a fraction yeah, of a yeah, penny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, shit, I, I think it's called business personal property. Something like that. Something to have. Or like fact. unattached property. I remember. Do we so get nailed for that for all this? Uh, I don't think so. I don't huh. know. They don't know. Anyway. <laughs> now would they, they know. Okay, they, they know now. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. <laughs> so <laughs> Highlighting that. Hey, they put this this fucker, whoever it was, put a decimal point in the wrong place. All of a sudden, I was paying taxes on $450,000 worth of equipment. Do you know what a pain in the ass it was? Just to get it fixed. Do you have any idea? Like I spent I more do. money like, on the, no. the on on trying to get it fixed than the tax. That's talking. why that's such a brilliant like f you that you know it, even though she will not have to get it paid. It's not and like whatever the the loopholes and the headaches and, and the anger. And, oh, that she's gonna have <laughs> to go phone, through just, uh, just to get it all fixed. Yeah. I mean, that's like. Uh, I'm gonna have to remember that. It's like an ultimate like <laughs> brutal dude. All right, I got a supplement study. That's uh, kind of cool. They did a multivitamin study uh, on uh, older people. Actually, it's a pretty good study. This was uh, I, this is in Science Daily, May 24, 2023, so it's a newer one. Columbia University Irvine Medical Center did this. So what they did is they took 3,500 adults over 60, and there were people in there that were randomly assigned to take a multivitamin uh, or a placebo for three years. That's it. So they said, take this every day. And you're part of the study. Well, wow, some people had a multivitamin. And they didn't know. Or, or a placebo. Nobody knows. Yeah. Multivitamin or placebo. That's all it was, right? At the end of each year, uh, so this was done for three years. At the end of each year, participants performed a series of online cognitive assessments at home designed to test memory function of the hippocampus, an area of the brain that is affected by normal aging. So this study showed that okay, at the end of the first year, memory improved for people taking a daily multivitamin. People with a placebo did not. They estimated hmm. that the improvement which was sustained over the three-year period was equivalent to about three years of age-related memory decline. The, if the effect was even more pronounced in people with underlying cardiovascular disease. So, multivitamins, they actually uh, have some value, especially with older people. Now, people might think, is it making them smarter? No, what's happening is the people taking the placebo probably have some nutrient deficiencies, which is causing the cognitive decline. So the people with the multivitamin were just filling those deficiencies. Mm -hmm. It's probably a good idea to take a multivitamin every yeah. single day. Yeah, I would think. Yeah. <laughs> what are you looking at me for? It's, that's just a, like, that seems like such a terrible study to Why? me. Why? Well, first of all, uh, the adherence, you're the only person I've ever met in my life that can consistently take a supplement and a pill every single day. Sure. So there's one. Sure. Okay. 
uh, the all the other facets of you know drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, yeah. exercising, not exercising. Yeah. We know the the benefits of the things that are, are pro health. Right. We know the the detriments of the things that are anti uh, health. Uh, what they could do to you, and so you've got a three year window of this group of people like that that have all these other variables that could affect the outcome of that. And the one thing that is supposedly really controlled is this vitamin they're taking every single day, which would be, and they're taking like a cognitive test where they're, they're surveying, right. Where they're basically saying like, Oh yeah, I re recall this or, Oh yeah. Like, no, the test itself tests memory, but okay. So this is why I like this study and why I brought it up. Vers no study is perfect, but I like this one versus other studies, other studies on multivitamins were people coming in and self-reporting, you know, they would do tests. Isn't so they that, have, isn't this self-reporting? No, too? different, different. Oh, okay. So I'll explain. So they'll have like 5,000 people show up. They'll have them fill out questionnaires. Then they'll say, oh, the people that took vitamins did better. And the people that didn't take vitamins did worse. Hmm. The problem with that is there's something called a, a healthy user bias. Yeah. People who voluntarily tend to take a vitamin also probably live healthier lives, right? right? They right. probably care about their health. This is different because they took 3,500 people, mm -hmm. none of which who all took a vitamin. the same agenda. Right? They gave all of them a pill. Some placebo, some supplement. And because it's a large group, 3,500, yeah. then you're going to, there's the, the variances that you'll see in the half that took the vitamins mm -hmm. in terms of who exercises and who doesn't. And who does. And it was consistent between people with a placebo yes. versus not. You're going to, it's safe to assume that because it's a general sample that's similar, that however, whatever percentage of people exercise here, it's probably pretty similar to the amount of people that exercise here. So these weren't people that reported and came in and said, I take a vitamin. Mm. These were 3,500 people who didn't take a vitamin. Mm. And then they said, here's your pills, take them. But and yeah, I some mean, of them placebo, it some has to point to the diet being deficient in certain minerals yes. and nutrients. Yes. So this one's much better than others. Mm. Uh, whereas again, you have that, what's called healthy, healthy user bias where, you know, people who report taking supplements also bench press more. Well, they also probably lift weights because, and that's right. why they take supplements right. type of deal. So, um, right. so anyway, all right. There you go. Cool. So <laughs> dinosaurs are real, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, real shout science. out, shout out. Um, our buddy that I, I am surprised we've actually made it this far and not, I came, I can't remember what I was, what, he's always got great reels, great content uh, on, uh, on Instagram. He just had a kid not too long ago. Yeah. Yeah. So Jordan Syatt. Oh, I love him. Yeah. And great I'm sure time. if you've been listening long enough, you've probably either one heard the episode we've done with him or heard us talk about him, but good friend of ours. Great dude. One of yeah. the best Real, trainers. Awesome online. content. Yes. Period. Phenomenal. I, his, yeah. His content is really, really good. And I, he, he talks about, uh, a lot of complex things in a very simple way for the average person. And so, which is hence why I think his page has almost got a million followers now. So check him out. Hey, look, Haya Health Vitamins are vitamins for children that are not made with a bunch of sugar, gummy junk. It's not glorified gummy bears or gummy worms. It's a real multivitamin. It tastes good, no artificial sweeteners, and it's got nutrients that children need. It also has efficacious doses. It's healthy. Go get some if you have kids and you care about their health. Go to HayaHealth.com. That's H-I-Y-A health.com forward slash mind pump and get 50% off your order with that link. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Jenna from Washington. Hi, Jenna. How can we help you? Hi, how are you guys doing? Very good, thank you. All right. Good. I just want to say thanks to Justin for all the conspiracy theories. It's so great. It's been some interesting conversation in our household. Oh. And Adam, now right. I'm officially obsessed with Nike, so thank you for that. I'm currently <laughs> probably in debt. And Sal, I am now okay. uh, Science Daily obsessed and Psychology Today, I think it is. So yeah. cool. Yes. Thanks for bringing that to the table. Um, okay. I have a couple of questions. The first one is about anabolic. Um, I used to work out all the time at a gym and I did um, hit training, lots of cardio running machines and I had trainers, um, but it was basically with hit and thrown in a little bit of weight. <clears throat> and then I stopped because um, it just got too expensive. So I started working out at home and within um, my hit, I would throw in the weights, but it would be super um, low weight, high reps. And now I ran out anabolic, but... I modified everything. 
Um, meaning I used dumbbells for everything. Um, I do belong to Planet Fitness. I know. Um, and I am hesitant to get um, a trainer there. Um, just again, the expense. And if I'm being completely honest, I am terrified of, you know, um, squat racks. Uh, it's, I'm just afraid of, you know, injuring myself. So I don't want to grab somebody random and just say, Hey, show me how to do this, but I do want to run it again. I like the structure of it. So I'm just kind of wondering what your thoughts are on going forward. Okay. Do, do Does Planet Fitness have squat racks or is it a Smith machine or are you talking about at home? They, um, I don't have any equipment at home. So I am talking about Planet Fitness. They have a very small area for free weights and most of it is machines. Um, the squat rack, I don't really know what you call it, but it glides up and down. Okay. That's a, that's a Smith machine. So that's very different from a, a squat rack. A squat rack is where you would rack a barbell and then you can unrack the barbell and it's free. And okay. the free weight barbell exercises that we recommend, like um, you know, a barbell squat or an overhead press, for example, you don't really you can't really do those on a Smith machine. It's actually a different exercise. So I would uh stick to split stance exercises like Bulgarian split stance squats or lunges in replace of barbell squats because you don't have access to something to allow you to do uh, a barbell squat. Now, if you want to learn how to use a Smith machine, because there are other exercises you could use it for, I don't think it's super valuable, but uh, you could definitely find value with it. Um, at, with any piece of equipment, if it's something you're uncomfortable with, go way lighter than you than you can handle and just practice the movement until you get comfortable using it. Remember, exor- strength training is a skill. All the exercises are skills. And so like learning any skill, you would not go hard if you didn't know the skill or weren't comfortable with it. So just go real easy, practice the movements, practice the machine or whatever you're trying to learn. And then that's how you're going to build uh, confidence. But as far as the barbell exercises are concerned, um, I'm pretty sure you could do all the upper body barbell exercises. You know, Planet Fitness probably has a, a bench press and you can do barbell rows. And I don't know if they'll allow you to do deadlifts at Planet Fitness. I've heard that they don't allow them or some places do. So I'm not quite sure. But like a barbell squat, you're not going to be able to do that there. So in that case, I would go like walking lunges or Bulgarian split stance squats. I, I mean, I have I have some suggestions. Uh, okay. Suggestion one is we can send you over map symmetry, which is our unilateral program. So everything is what Sal is saying, split stance, uh, one arm, one leg. So that's all dumbbell work, right? And just skip yep. out on the barbell side and just run the unilateral piece. So that's, that's option one if we're going to stay at – Planet Fitness, and we, we're going to avoid the barbell work. Now, personally, if you were my client, I would love to get you into the barbell stuff. And what I could do is say, hey, save the money on the personal trainer. Go get yourself a barbell and about you know 100 pounds worth of weights, meaning rubber plates, and video yourself. I'll put you in the forum for free and take videos of yourself using very lightweight, doing squats and deadlifts in your garage where you're not by anybody else and so you're not worried about being embarrassed about your form and technique. Let us watch you and give you help on your, and cue you and teach you virtually how to do a squat and a deadlift better. Um, that one would save the money to save any sort of a bear embarrassment or risk or what you might have to do by asking Planet Fitness people if you can or cannot do something um, and allow it just because... There's so much value in learning how to barbell, deadlift, squat, and overhead press. I I would you know encourage you to do that and let me try and help you as best I can virtually. So that's what I would like to do. But either one of those are, are okay options. If you don't want to do the barbell at home and have us virtually help you, then you know we could send you over a map symmetry and you could follow the. Jenna, is there a gym that you have as an alternative that would have the actual rack that you could use and do free weight barbell exercises? And if so, what's the cost difference? There is. It's uh, it's a little bit farther, and there it's great. It's huge. They have an Olympic um, room. It's just um, it's ginormous. Um, <sighs> It's like ten dollars a month at Planet Fitness and the other places, probably around forty a month. Okay. Um, you know, I would definitely be willing to put in 
you know, the money and the effort um, for the, these particular programs. Um, so, it, I mean, it's something to think about, but I do have symmetry. I should tell you, I sh I'm sorry, I should have uh -huh. told you that. I When I modified and I just did dumbbells, I noticed how off everything was. And so I did symmetry and it just makes sense for me to do the barbells because I, and I could be wrong. I just feel like there might be more stability with that. Am I wrong there? Yeah, you are. Yeah. No, no, you're not wrong. Uh, with barbells, because it's bilateral, you can lift more weight. Um, there's value in both. So one isn't better than the other. They're just sometimes one's more appropriate than the other. And if you're always doing one and switching to the other one, we'll start to yeah. give you some great it, results. It's definitely beneficial if you learn the skill of barbell lifting. And so, you know, I, I know it's a bit more of a financial commitment to look at that option down the street. If there's a, a valid trainer, if you do your research and there's somebody there that's like, you know, you feel, get a good feeling from, or at least shop it for a while. Uh, I would, I would just focus on that. Like our bench squat deadlift, like have somebody really like break down the mechanics of that with you and just teach it to you for a month and like commit to that, uh, learn it. So then you can apply it, uh, on your own. Or, you know, if, uh, again, the, the conundrum is that, uh, planet fitness doesn't really have like the setup for you as easily that way. So, um, I don't know how that's going to work uh, in terms of like you doing that at home with barbell or, you know, you doing it over like a, a modified version over at uh, planet fitness. But, uh, either way, I think that the skill of it itself, maybe there's another option for you down the road, a different gym that you can find. But, uh, I, I think the barbell skill itself is very beneficial. Yeah, the, the, the reason why I was so adamant about going that direction is because of what you said when we started this conversation. Because you've you've got a lot of experience already doing the dumbbell circuit training type of work, I know how beneficial <sighs> the barbell work is going to be for you. If you were coming in completely green right. and you've never lifted weights whatsoever, we could put you on like a map starter <clears throat> or a, a bait real basic program like that, <clears throat> and you're you're going to see great change in results. But if you're trying to break through a plateau or you're looking to accelerate your results, get new stimulus. Yes. And you've never done barbell lifting like consistently, there's going to be huge value and upside to what it's going to do as far as changing and shaping and sculpting your body. And so uh, that I would really be urging you to do it. Doesn't mean I can't put together a, a good routine that is just dumbbell work or unilateral work. And it doesn't mean we can't get in, in good shape doing that. It's just that. You because that's not something you do, it's going to be so novel to the body. You're going to be able to load the bar down the road way more than you've ever done before, and that's going to create way more opportunity for change. Yeah, I look, it's if you if you go to that other gym, you're going to have access to um exercises that are just so valuable, they're just so effective, they're incredibly effective, they're the most effective strength training exercises you could possibly do. And it's another 30 bucks a month. You said it's 40 bucks. You're paying 10 now. So you pay another 30. Here's what I would do. If you were my friend, I'd say, do both. Okay. So now you're paying $40 more a month. It's only 10 bucks a month at Planet Fitness. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not that big of a, I mean, it's not a huge difference. I don't know your financial situation. So maybe I'm speaking um, at a turn here, but you know, okay, 40 bucks a month. So that's 10 bucks a week. You have access now to both gyms. So you have the really convenient one that's closer. So when you're not doing the barbell work, you could skip over there. And then, hey, I'm going to go today. I'm doing the barbell work. I'll go to the gym that allows the the free weight stuff. But it's just so valuable that, um, especially, you know, just from hearing you talk, like if you practice those exercises, do them right, slowly get good at them, you're going to see profound differences in your body. Profound. Justin also suggested something that I, I want to circle back to that, like, uh, a lot of clients don't know they can do this. Like when you're when you're buying or paying for a trainer, if you just go in and say train me, they're going to put together whatever they think is best for you. But you could go down to that gym and do what he said, which is, "Hey, could I hire somebody?" And they'll probably have like packages of training: five sessions, ten sessions, fifteen sessions. That's normally how they sell them. Find one that you feel is in your budget that you're like, "Okay, I feel like I'm I'm willing to invest this much on that," and say, "Hey, could I get?" five sessions with this trainer and all I want them to do is to teach me how to squat, deadlift and over I just want to practice those three movements with them. I want somebody who knows what they're doing and that's all I want to do with them. And they just yeah. literally they spend the entire hour with you 
teaching you how to do those That's movements it. for those five hours, those five sessions, you're going to get tremendous benefit from that. Mm -hmm. Tremendous benefit. So okay. you, you can do that. So, you know, and, and, and just f until you find someone, and I tell you what, if there's a gym that has Olympic setup, there's probably some good there's coaches. There's probably some great trainers. Yeah, yeah that can Again, teach yeah. Olympic type move. If you can teach Olympic movements, yeah. you can teach a barbell squat. And, and, and their, their manager will probably point you in a good direction at that point. Uh, that's find them. Good, so. po good point. Go straight <laughs> yeah. to the, and when you get into that gym, say, can I speak to the manager and then tell them specifically what you're looking for? Mm -hmm. And then they will put you with the right coach and trainer. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so my second uh, question, maybe it's just a concern, is about um, Fitbits. So I, I'm currently um, wearing a CGM, and so I have it on for about um, three months. And so I wear my Fitbit for the three months. Well, if I'm working out at the gym or at home or whatever, um, but I don't get those you know, 10,000 steps, 12,000 steps. I mean, is it really that, is it really that big of a deal? I mean, I'm a mom of three. I, I'm kind of, you know, I'm running around a lot, but those steps don't add up. And I remember you guys on an episode talked about, you know, if you are a type of person who gets a little bit um, caught up in getting, you know, those steps in, it's not, maybe it's not the best idea, but I feel like it's almost a have to with the CGMs just so I can be very precise. So is it, is it just like a thing to, you know, get those 10,000 steps in or does it just not there really matter? Especially there, if you're getting, uh, you know, exercise in other places. Yeah, no, there's nothing magical about 10,000 steps. It's a kind of a general rule that, you know, people give or that we'll talk about. And just because most people are pretty sedentary or we don't get up and move a lot. And it's an easier way, actually, to coach somebody to, 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 to move more. Instead of me saying, hey, go get on the treadmill for 30 minutes and run or do that. It's like I could just tell clients, hey, shoot for 8,000 steps a day. Mm -hmm. It's an easy target. But you just got to keep in mind that there's a there is a big difference between a day and let's let, forget if you worked out or not a day that you moved you know for 10 or 12,000 steps and a day that you move for 3,000 steps that will make a huge difference in the amount of calories that you probably should consume that that okay. many different that uh, difference of 5 to 7,000 steps in a day is a is a pretty significant difference in calorie output and intake Jenna right? when you miss the steps what number do you typically hit at uh sometimes um better question have been what's your lowest day and what's your highest day look like oh my gosh okay we're going to be completely honest here yes, my lowest please, day please. is probably three and my highest day was 19 and that was within cool. one week okay, yeah well so okay so you average it look, yeah. you just average it out is is what i would do and also when it comes to steps people think this is silly but the way that you hit those steps is this, the, the, what we used to call stupid advice back in the day, park down the street instead mm -hmm. of next to the store, take the stairs instead of the elevator, um, stand up and do something instead of sitting down and doing something like those little things throughout the day add up to like 3000 steps a day. Uh, okay. But but if you miss here and there, it's not that big of a deal. It really isn't like the strength training is more important. You know, that lasts, that sticks around with you. Um, and you know, the, the steps, every, it doesn't make that huge of a difference if you miss, you know, now and again, it's just trying to prompt you to be more active, uh, for the most part. So just to be consistently active and moving around and just conscious of, you know, when you're sitting down, when you're relaxing, when you're kind of in those tendencies of like vegging out on TV or whatever to get up, move around the, and do that. To me, that's the most important thing is just the awareness around it. Right. So w over my career, what I've, I've recognized with m most of my clients that track their steps and, and this is myself included on the days that I move the least, I also tend to have the worst eating behaviors. Yep. Because I'm sedentary, I'm probably watching TV, or I'm, t I'm tired, I don't feel like moving around. I also tend to make bad food choices. The days that I'm active and I'm moving around, I'm so busy, I'm not making bad food choices, plus I'm burning like crazy. So to me, that's the big takeaway here is like, just be aware of that. Be aware of that, hey, this is a day where I didn't really move much. Man, this is a day I probably need to be a little bit tighter on my choices and be really good about what I choose to eat on the day. That's not the day I decide to add the extra, you know, the glass of wine or snack on the crackers a little bit here. Like, those are the days I, I want to be really tight with my stuff. So 
that to me, that's the most important thing is when you have a discrepancy of you could have a day of 3,000 steps and you could have a day of 19,000 steps is also be aware of your eating patterns and behaviors on those days and learn to be mindful of that. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, thanks you guys so much. I really appreciate it. You got it, Jenna. All we'll right. put you in the forum too. So if you want to show us your, your form, we can help you out. Yes. Stay in touch. All right. mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi, Thank Jenna. you. You know, two things come to mind with, with this particular question. One is, I don't know if you guys have done this. I, I know you have for sure, Adam, where you track your steps and then you do the like, I'm going to park at the end of the parking lot. I'm going to walk to the far bathroom. I'm going to take the stairs. It's like three to 4,000 steps a day. Oh yeah. It's crazy it's, how much it adds it's, up. It's, it's, so all these little things add up, you know? And the second thing that really comes to mind is, and I really hate the gym industry for this. And I was a part of this. I remember when this started happening. We have conditioned people to think that the value of a gym is so low that $10 a month or $20 a month mm -hmm. difference is like, oh, that gym's so much more expensive. I guarantee you, like, I don't know Jenna, okay? But I bet you she spends more than that on coffee mm -hmm. or random things. Everybody does. So, you know, look at a gym at 40 bucks a month. Wow, that's so expensive because we've conditioned ourselves to think $10 yeah, a month. Well, is it's, it's ridiculous. I think it's less about the dollar amount. We still just look at gyms as a luxury and not as like a necessity. We don't look at it like our PG&E bill. We don't look at it like our cell phone bill. We don't look at like our insurance to our car payment. We look yeah. at it as, oh, it's a nice to have. When, when in reality, it should be, we. The, what I think all of us would love to see is that people condition themselves to look at their gym bill just like they do their PG&E, just like they do their insurance. It's like, this is something that is going to keep me a healthy, fit, strong person for the rest of my life. It's no longer a luxury to have it. It's a must-have. And then I think that changing that mindset. And yeah, and it's not just about checking into the gym, right? Like uh, that that tends to be the, the thought process. Like I have a gym membership. I made it today to the gym. <laughs> what are you doing in the gym? How effective is the gym? Like what, uh, how's your setup? What's your programming look like? All that stuff. Like if you could apply that in a better place for just like $30 more, like it's a no brainer to where you're going to get like results. Like that's what I'm in there to do is to get results. N name one thing that you could spend $40 a month on, that's $10 a week, name one thing you could spend that on that you use that will give you as much value for your entire life as a well-used gym. You know, Nothing. It, it, along those lines too, what Justin should, suggested is, I don't think we say this enough on this podcast, and, and probably because we didn't do it a lot. Like, I wish, I wish, I, I never trained a client once in my life that came to me and asked for this, although I, I would if they did, right? They're paying me, so I would give them what they want when it comes to, if they said, listen, all I want you to do in these five sessions is teach me squat, bench, overhead, press. That's all I want to practice. I want to be yeah. good at those movements. Yeah. Can you do that in five hours? Sure. And I mean, I would go, yeah, I could do that. But nobody ever asked that. Yeah. And there's so much value in just doing that. Forget the whole, I want to lose 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. or I want to get, like, just those movements are so valuable to learn how to do. And she's very normal. She's the She is the normal. Like, most yeah. people are very intimidated. Hey, I was intimidated as a trainer. The reason why I didn't deadlift for so many years yeah. is because even as a trainer, I was scared to do it wrong. Right. Yeah. So I know if I feel that way as a fucking trainer, I read the books. Your I average have person case. is, yeah. Your average person the is, is the same way. So I get it. I totally get it. And you are actually normal to be intimidated to do a squat and deadlift, but don't let that stop you from learning. And one of the best things you can do is go, hey, you know, every once in a while, I, I go get myself some jewelry or go to a concert and I yeah. spend 500 bucks. So if you go spend 500 bucks every once in a while on, on yourself and so like, you know what, go spend that on investing and getting a coach and tell them this is what you want from it and i promise that the return on that is going to be insane for the rest of your life our next caller is olivia from pennsylvania olivia what's happening how can we help you i'm good how are you guys good good good, good. i'm so excited oh my gosh okay <laughs> so too. my question um I've ran, I'm just going to read it. I'm paying attention, but um, I ran RGB symmetry anabolic again, and then I'm in the middle of aesthetic again. Um, and I track all my workouts and I've noticed that my squat, my deadlift, my rows and my overhead press have all like gone up since the last time I ran aesthetic, but my bench, like my barbell bench has probably gotten worse. But after I ran symmetry, my dumbbell bench went up, but my barbell bench still kind of sucks. And so I was wondering if you guys could help me with that. And then <clears throat> additionally, I feel like all my newbie gains are like pretty maxed out and I'm left with like, I have a pretty good upper body, but my lower body's like nothing special. So 
since I've like ran all your programs that I have, I'm like not really sure where to go from here. Okay. How, first off, how long have you been working out for now consistently? Um, I've been lifting for like two years. Okay. And you followed our programs. So, th- and all those ones you listed would be like a nine months to a year. So for, yeah. for a decent chunk of that time, you've been running ours. What are your, yeah. what are your big lifts at now? What is your squat, your deadlift, your overhead press, um, your bench press? When I was in phase one of aesthetic recently, I was doing like, I deadlifted like 185. I squatted, I think 165 for like three reps each. And then, um, good my overhead press, I'm doing like just the barbell really. Cause that's hard. And then my rows are like, I think I was doing like 90. Okay. Those are all really good. Yeah. Numbers, how, by the how, way. What's your body 20, weight at? 20 years old. Yeah. Bro. You're tiny too. You, you're, you're young. How, how, what's your body? Weight? <laughs> yeah. I'm like 130 pounds. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're kicking yeah. ass. Yeah, you are. You're doing really, really good. Are you, are you like really lean? Have you gone into a bulk? Have you tried like bumping your calories? Um, I mean, I've tried, but like I get scared and then mm, okay. I don't like fully commit to it. There's the so problem. There, there, yeah, there's our, there's our hiccup Very now. common. You've got all your newbie gains from kind of keeping your calories at maintenance or at even maybe a deficit sometimes. And now you're max. Now it's like if you want to continue to build more muscle, you're going to have yeah, to put it, feed it. Yeah, give it a calorie surplus. Just remember this. What's really cool. Uh, when you When you do that and you do it the right way by – Eating good, making good food choices, adding protein, and you follow the program. Even if the scale went up, something which would probably scare the shit out of you, fifteen pounds, which is crazy, mm-hmm. probably for your size. Even if it goes yeah. to that, a good chunk of that is going to be primarily muscle, and you can always cut the calories back down. And when you do, I promise you're going to shred back out. It's just yeah. getting over that mind fuck of oh my god, my pants are fitting tighter, and oh my god, I'm putting weight on. If you are training consistently you're following a mass program and the extra calories you're eating are coming from good places i promise you most of that weight is good weight and it's going to serve you really well when you come back into a cut yeah. you, you you wrote in your yeah. question that you want to be a muscle mommy is that, yeah. is that, is that legit what this you is want a new term here yeah, yeah. you really want yeah. that i mean i like it, i would used to be like bigger like i was chubbier and then i got like now i'm like small and you know body dysmorphia like you're never happy yeah. so now that i'm so small i'm like i want to be huge you know <laughs> yeah okay so i like it yeah. i love it all right so so uh, how has your body weight changed since you've li- started lifting has it changed at all yeah i was like 160 oh, at my shit. heaviest which is when i started and now i'm like 130 wow do you know what your body fat percentage is by any chance i have no idea it's probably like I mean, if I'm just comparing myself to like pictures, like low twenties. You're kicking ass. You yeah. need to bump mm-hmm. your calories. So look, yeah. you've probably built a significant, a decent amount of muscle in that period of time, which means now your caloric requirements are higher. So mm-hmm. you're not going to build any more unless you increase your calories. So now you're probably what you were eating before was enough to build, but now what you're eating is just enough to keep what you have and not to yeah. build. So you got to go on a bulk. You mentioned body dysmorphia and uh, you know most of us can, can can relate to that. So I think you should do MAPS power lift. Oh, I love I that. I think you should yeah. focus on getting stronger. I think you should bump your yeah, calories by that. like 400 calories a day. Make sure you hit your body weight and protein. So you if you're 130 pounds, I would aim for 120 to 130 grams of protein a day. Whatever yeah. your calories are at, bump them by three to 400 follow mass power lift. Don't weigh yourself. Don't worry about your weight on the scale. Just get strong. See how mm-hmm. strong you can get. And you are going to trip yourself out. Yes. How awesome the you results are going to be. The fact that you came from 160 down to 130, I guarantee you, one, you'll never get back. You will not get up to 160 by doing it this way, by what we're talking about. And you're going to be eating more food than you ever met in your life. It's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to blow your mind if you can and just- you're going to get strong as hell. Yeah. And you're going to be a muscle mommy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I did just have like, I'm a little worried because I think in my fear of like getting like fat again, I was like overeating protein. I'm like 130 pounds, like I said, but I'm hitting like 145, 150 grams of protein a day. So like, is it okay if I, if in my like increasing my calories, if yeah. I dropped a protein a little bit? No, you can keep your protein, just increase you your carbs or your fats. And that's not okay. a that's not a bad amount over. It's okay. You're no, fine. you're fine. You're okay. totally fine. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you feel good. If you can eat that much protein, it doesn't mess up your digestion and you feel good mm-hmm. on that, you're fine. Is that from food or protein yeah. shakes? Um, mostly food. Well, I used to be vegetarian. So when I found you guys, I was vegetarian well, we changed and the then you guys pretty much convinced me that that was stupid <laughs> because I wasn't doing it for like 
like the animals, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just being like restrictive and whatnot. So God, yeah, I now it's you. mostly from food. Olivia, how, how different do you feel now that you've been lifting and eating protein and all that stuff? I mean, I'm like a totally different person. Yeah. <laughs> I feel very different. Like I feel really good yeah. now. Awesome. Mm. So right. yeah. How many calories are you eating a day right now? I'm at like 2000. What? And okay. So and you're lifting. Are you doing cardio? Are you doing anything else? Um, I recently in the past, like two weeks, I'm like really trying to stop with the cardio. So I'm just walking. Okay. And how, what were you doing before for cardio? Um, I was doing like the Stairmaster, like four or five times a week. Oh, you know what? Just dropping, like walking the, a lot. just dropping the cardio. You're probably going to see some strength gains. Yeah. That mm -hmm. alone. I might bump my calories a little less than what Sal said. Originally. Yeah. Now that I know that yeah. you 200 calories. Yeah. Go up 200 calories. Do what you're doing with the cardio. Don't do it. Just do the walking. Um, yeah. Um, and do MAPS power lift. We'll send that to you if you don't have it. Okay. And then, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And watch what happens. I'm going to throw you in the forum too. I want to hear, I want to hear updates. Yeah. So we're going to put you in the forum yeah. and keep us posted. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. You got it. Killing no it. Thanks for calling. Bye. 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 Oh my God. I love her. Yeah. I love it. When we get when <laughs> 20 we get, years old. Yeah. When yeah. We get kids this age. Cause we just literally saved her from 10 years of garbage that you end up going through when you don't know what you're doing and you follow crappy advice online. You know? Oh yeah. That, that's so makes me feel so, so it, the right it makes me feel so good that a bunch of old fuddy duddies like us can still <laughs> make a connection to made, somebody. Made an impact somehow. Yeah. She's 20 years younger than us, right? It's really tough to make a connection to 23, 24 years younger. <laughs> yeah. For some of us. <laughs> Almost 50 years younger for some of us. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, making a connection to somebody like that and, and even be able to shift her mindset, even around the way she was eating and now training, and then just oh man, yeah. what a cool yeah, That's she's doing cool. a great job, and it, it's she's just not eating enough. Oh, dude, uh, she, two thousand calories at her body weight is great, so she's already. I mean, she's built muscle. She's enough. moving she's, in the right yeah. direction. Well, that's uh, okay. That's a good thing to say right now. Okay. She's perfect right now. Like yep. you, you don't have to do anything where you're yeah. at. You're eating a good amount of calories. She is already really strong. She's 30 pounds lighter than she's ever yeah. been. She she's feels healthy, better. Like everything's like, going well. But, and I think that's important that people understand that. Like when we answer questions like that, you know, she has a very specific goal. Yeah. I want to be a muscle woman. I want to build more muscle. Like, okay, well then this yeah. is what we do. Yep. But this person is in a incredibly healthy Good place right now. I could get her to yeah. 26, 27 oh, calories God, yes. within, within a six month period. Oh, yes. Yeah, no problem. Sooner than that. Sooner yeah. than that. Yeah. I think just her bumping right now is switching to that program without any fat gain or minimal. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Our next caller is Matt from Colorado. Matt, what's <laughs> happening, man? How can we help you? <laughs> hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, you got just it. like everybody else, I want to thank you guys for all the great content you put out, all the great information. It's uh, really helped me out. And uh, also, your podcast has by far the best audio of any podcast I listen to. I never have any problems hearing any of you or your guests or, uh, that's not the case on most podcasts. So I really appreciate that. Shout out there to Doug. Go. Thanks, Doug. Yeah. He does a great job. Yeah, we're going to keep him a little bit longer. Yep. 30 days. <laughs> 30 days. Especially since I'm a partner here. <laughs> His trial base. Uh, let's so hear it, Matt. The question kind of has the two parts to it. Um, uh, it's about MAPS 15. Um, I really enjoy that style of training. Uh, works best with my schedule. I feel good on it. I really enjoy it. Um, I've run it uh, as written twice now. Um, I know you guys say that uh, shorter workouts like that with the same volume as less workouts done longer is about the same. But um, I've also noticed that uh, when callers call in and they have a lot of stress in their life, like new parents or a physical job or um, med students, stuff like that. MAPS 15 is kind of your go-to for people that need to kind of lighten things up a little bit. So it's just got me wondering if I can expect to get as good a progress on that kind of style of training long-term as I would some of your other programs. Um, or is that kind of more of a good program style for maintaining when you have additional outside stressors? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. So, um, okay. So total volume wise, MAPS 15 still has less volume than many of our other programs. Okay. So it would have the same amount of volume as let's say like a two day a week, I would say full body routine is probably what it would equate to. But yeah. like even MAPS anabolic two days a week with trigger sessions has a little bit more volume, performance, aesthetic, strong split. Those have more volume. So it's still a little less volume. Now, now, does that mean you can't continue progressing? No, you could keep, I mean, I hit a PR and deadlift that uh, I haven't been able to touch for, for years 
following that kind of format. You could also modify it by adding volume mm -hmm. to those days. So you could turn maps 15 into maps 30 yep. if you wanted. Now, the, 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 the main reason why we recommend it to people with uh, like crazy schedules and stuff is the time. And then the second reason is when you look at, when you compare volume to volume, we, I strongly believe that even if the volume is equated, it's still less stress on the body because there seems to be this cumulative stress that builds when you do a long workout that you don't necessarily get with shorter, more frequent workouts, right? So like, imagine this, right? Imagine, uh, you know, walking for, for two hours. Now imagine walking for 20 minutes, but over the course of a bunch of days that comes out to two hours, which one is probably going to stress the body more probably that one, two hour workout because of the cumulative kind of stress. So even right. when volume and frequency is equated and I look, we've experimented with this. I've done these all day workouts where I'll do like just so many sets in a day that I would never be able to do in a workout. But the reason what I did was I did, you know, so many sets every other hour. So it was like totally split up throughout the whole day. And it just doesn't beat up my body, uh, like doing it all at once. So it's, I know the studies show that it's equated and I would say for the most part, that's true, but not necessarily. Okay. But for someone like you, if you want to continue progressing, right, get stronger in the exercises. So now you're progressively overloading. And then if you need to add volume, if you have the time, it could go, you can add a set or add an exercise. And now you're doing 25 or 30 minute workouts instead of 15 minute workouts. You could also do stuff like this. You could throw a, a, a pull up bar in your doorway and, you know, every every other day or every once in a while when you pass by it, you hop up there and you get 15, 20 reps real quick. So there's ways to add like volume into your week yep. that doesn't make it feel like you're like adding a workout in there or extending the workout double or whatever like that. And just say, hey, you know what? I'm going to mm -hmm. do every time I walk by that pull-up bar, I'm going to jump up there and grab 10 pull-ups. Or, you know, every time I get up, I'm just going to start the day with 15 to 20 push-ups. Like there's a lot of glue or you can do like Keep what we a have. band like close like by. Like we have yep. in MAPS Anabolic trigger sessions. You could just have some bands. Like I, at my house, I have bands that are always attached to a doorway Same. on a closet. And sometimes when I'm really trying to, you know, I got, I got more time. I'm trying to increase volume and just frequency. I'll just get over there and do two or three sets of some chest flies and some rows real quick and then move about my day. So there's a lot of ways that you can still kind of follow the the format of 15 because it works so well. Because that's another thing, too, is important. Like you you mentioned that it works really well for your life. That's so mm -hmm. important. Like right. it, it's working well with your schedule. You feel good doing it. And so I don't like to fuck that up. So if you like that, stick with that. And then, you know, if you have an extra, extra 10, 15 minutes on certain days, go ahead and either one, add some sets like Sal said or – or just jump down and get some push-ups or pull-ups and and add volume that way, and you'll see some strength and development come from just doing that. Yeah. How's your progress been on on Mass Fifteen so far? Good. So the first uh, time I ran through it, um, I saw some strength gains. Um, right now, I'm about two months into a cut, so I'm not really seeing a lot of strength gains. Sure. But, um, maintaining well on it. Oh, that's not bad. Maintaining on a cut. Are you doing the barbell yeah. version or the or the the suspension trainer version? I did the barbell version uh, both times. Oh, good. Um, Excellent. And it so that kind of runs into my second part of the question. Um, like I said, I've run through it twice already as written, um, and so I'm kind of looking for a little more variety. So I kind of rewrote it by adapting workouts from your other maps programs. Great to idea. fit that schedule so i have like a map strong 15 and a maps uh performance 15 love that oh um, wait you just, love that. you just gave us a great idea yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love right that. now 15 minute versions uh, of all the other ones yeah i'm right now i'm doing kettlebell for aesthetics so i just took the three workouts cut them in half and doing each of those as my six Beautiful. um and i kind of add a little bit to them to make them like 20 to 30 minutes each um so is that advisable? Do you Dude, that's, that's great. Totally totally feasible. Yeah, Bro, that's a perfect. great strategy. That's perfect. Yeah. I mean, this is literally like when we built these, this was the intent was doing our best that we could to build programs that really fit people's lifestyles, recognizing that most people should, after they run them a few times, start to modify and adapt into their life. And you're doing a perfect yeah. job of that. Yeah. And we picked those initial exercises because they were you know, going to maximize your effort the most in terms of like, you know, move the needle the most. So 
Um, yeah, as you go, you've already run through all that. Like, it's totally a great idea to, to add a bit of a variety in there from other programs. And then, you know, kind of what Adam was talking about in terms of like, like just having other items around your house and like work and, you know, you just get in some reps, like just randomly throughout the day, totally uh, enhances that by adding volume, just like in a way that's not quite as structured. And it's something that will like fit well with that kind of mentality. So I, I think you're on, on point. Okay. Yeah, that's something else I did recently. I just kind of started doing like a uh, anabolic trigger session with some bands in the evening and, and yeah. just yeah, trying to add a little more volume. Bro, so. you're you're on it, dude. Yeah, good. You're you're on it. Good deal, man. Yeah, 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 you're on it. You guys have any any plans to write any more Map 15 style programs? We actually talked about exactly what yeah. you yeah, are yeah, doing, it's funny you which is that. actually modifying every program that there's like a 15, 20 minute version of all of them. Yep. So you're kind of doing what we plan that to do, anyways, awesome. man. Yeah, 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 right on. Love it, man. It's your workout snacks. Thank you, guys. All right. All right, brother. Thank you. Thanks Appreciate for it. In. I had a guy who uh, used to work for me who was, he was trying to get, he, for whatever reason, he wanted to do 100 push ups at one time. And all he did was you every. Went to prison? And, and I went to prison. <laughs> all he did was every hour. That's what happens. Or every other hour. It wasn't always perfect. He would just get down on the floor yeah. and do 15 to 20 push ups. And he could do 15 to 20 easily. It wasn't like a workout. Yeah. And he got to 100 push ups. So and he never practiced Quickly, 100 push ups. Right? Yeah. He never practiced doing 100. He just did that all day long. Yeah. It really is different. Frequency is you know, a whole nother monster. It's man. a whole nother monster and it doesn't beat you up the same. So I know that we talk about the equating the volume, but no, there's more to the story. I wish I understood that as huge. a young trainer, like the value of like the little stuff like yeah. that. You know, as a, as a young kid, I just I looked at that and went like, oh, that's worthless. Yeah, waste yeah. of time. I'm not sweating. I'm not burning. I'm not sore. Yeah. So it's not, do it's such a stupid way to look at it. And it's like, you had a suspension trainer, hang it from a tree or somewhere in your house, put the rubber bands up somewhere like that yep. and get in the habit of just when you walk by taking one one set one yeah. set of it do you do that and you're consistent with doing stuff like that you will see a huge difference you will our next caller is samantha from connecticut hi samantha how can we help you hi. nice to meet hello, you guys hello. nice to meet you too um so just a little context for my question is so i basically was working with a coach about a year and a half ago and she was having me do um, she wanted me to lose, I'm about 30% body fat. Um, so she wanted me to do a lot of cardio to get that down. And I knew that wasn't right because I know strength training is the best thing to do. However, for a little bit, I'm like, let's just trust the process. So that's what I was doing. And the scale wasn't, it was moving a little, but on days where it would, or weeks when it would plateau, she would say, well, you know, how many calories are you burning? And I'm like, well, my watch said like 300. And she's like, nope, that's not enough. Like you need to be doing 500. Um, and so I guess that I kind of had that mentality in my mind since then of like, oh, okay. You know, what do I, I don't know what more I have to do cardio wise to get there, but like, okay. So long story short, you know, that didn't work out. I didn't feel like she was the right fit for me. So now here I am working on my own. Um, I'm doing just strength training. I'm, I kind of split it up with push pull leg days. Um, but I guess that thing is still on my mind where I'll do a great workout. I'll do strength training. I feel like I gave it my all, you know, I'm going up in weight. Um, but I look at my watch when I'm done and the calories say like, to 200 or like 98 and i'm like what like it, it makes me second guess like am i doing the right thing am i doing enough are these things just not accurate so i guess that's kind of my question is about that the yeah. answer is you hired a terrible trainer yeah. that's the i know yeah. serious like this didn't this mean matters nothing no okay. i would not want you to give a shit about one day your leg session was 350 calories another day it was 200 calories another day it was five so i don't even care you know what Matt? i, I, I mean it's, it's good to move because it's good for you but mm -hmm. the calorie burn uh, model of all of this is, is terrible it's, game. It's yeah. false. In fact, a huge study Maybe just came out. Wheels. Huge study just came and it's making waves right now. And it shows that the, the amount of movement that we do doesn't really change the amount of calories that we burn because the body actually adapts quite quickly. And that is, uh, supports studies that were done on modern hunter-gatherers who are so active in comparison to Western couch potatoes who still don't burn that many more calories. The body simply adapts when you're just burning calories. Now, if you kind of do a sideways approach and say, okay, well, my, I'm telling my body it needs muscle, the result mm -hmm. of which is a faster metabolism, the result of this, which is burning more calories, well, then you can significantly uh, impact that. So don't worry too much about calories burned. It's good to be active. 
So move. It's healthy for you to move. That's a fact. But in terms of how many calories you're burning because of movement, don't even worry about that. Just worry about strength, building muscle. Am I eating enough protein? Am I okay. eating in a way that's supporting all of that? And then start mm -hmm. to look at calories and how to manipulate that. And then you'll get there. And not only will you get there, but you'll do it in a sustainable way. Also keep in mind this. So and this is what a good trainer should <sighs> communicate to you. You could run on a treadmill as hard as you can for an hour and say you burn 500 calories. But as soon as you get done off that treadmill, your body is now done burning extra calories. Maybe for the next 30 minutes, the heart rate comes down. Someone would make the case for. So after that, you're not getting any extra benefit from that, that 500 calorie burn from that. When you strength train and only burn 200 to 50, 250 calories in your leg workout, you not only burn that 250 calories, but then for the next like 48 to 72 hours, your body is having to utilize more energy to repair the muscle damage. And then in addition to that, adapt and build muscle. And the amount right. of calories that takes up is far more than what the, the calorie burned in that one hour is. In addition to the extra benefit that Sal said, you also now add more muscle, which then you're, requires more calories to sustain on your body, which means you sped up your metabolism. So right. when you lift weights, you're getting like this three pronged, you know, benefit from it. When you run on the treadmill, you get that one benefit while you run. That's it. It's over. Yeah. So far, far, far better for you to focus on building mm -hmm. muscle, getting stronger. Don't worry about the arbitrary numbers of 200 to 300 or 500 in a, in a calorie burn. You know, eat your protein intake. Make sure you're hitting what you need to hit on a regular basis. Try and get strong in the gym. Nothing is going to lean you out uh, better than doing that. Yeah, you're investing in the long term. You're not just spending your money right now to to get quick results. So, like that, building muscle is going to take you so much further. And just keeping that mentality um, and uh, just focused on that. What yeah. kind of, What kind of gym was it? The trainer from? Um. So. She, I actually went to high school with her, mm. so she wasn't technically in a gym. Oh. But I, the only reason why I felt good about it at the time was I was like, oh, I know this person, I and know. like, yeah. she looks strong. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean well, to insult your friend. Look, no, just to, no, okay. okay. <laughs> look, look, just to, just to kind of hammer this home, okay? Think of it this way: if we just burn more calories, the more that we moved, we would have mm -hmm. not. We're not. We wouldn't be here as a species. I mean, you know, think about you know, a hundred thousand years ago, fifty thousand years ago. Having to hunt and gather, and you can't just sit around and watch TV or whatever, and you're moving all the time. And calories are really hard to come by in nature. Before the agricultural revolution, where we figured out how to plant things and, and put them in a place, and then, of course, you know, have markets and, and, and grocery stores, finding calories every day, that was a huge hurdle. It makes no sense if our bodies just burn tons of calories all the time because we're moving all the time and they don't adapt in a way right. to become more efficient. It just doesn't work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I did hear an episode a couple uh, months ago of a girl who had a similar situation to me and you told her to kind of go back up and eat at maintenance and come back down. Yeah. And so I did try to do that, but I worry maybe I wasn't at maintenance for long enough because now I'm in a cut and nothing's happening. Yeah, so I'm like, Oh, I don't know if I did it wrong. Samantha, what are your calories at in a cut? Um, so right now I'm using this app um, that kind of tells me like each week, I don't know if you've ever heard of an app like this, but each week it tells you kind of like what to do. Um, so right now I'm down to about 1700. Okay. And that's your, and that's your cut. Yeah. And nothing's happening. Not really. Yeah. I would I, try to go do a reverse diet, build some muscle, get to the point where you can cut from a higher place okay. and then try doing a cut, but spend a decent amount of time in the building phase. Don't jump to the cut. Uh, too soon. Otherwise, you may end up in a situation where you got to bring your calories way down and then it's not a sustainable place. Don't yeah. do a cut until you start to see yourself get stronger in some of the big lifts. That's a good okay. a good way to do it. Like So just because you've been running in a maintenance or a surplus for a couple of weeks, if you haven't done it long enough to see your bench, your squat, your deadlift, your, you haven't seen any of those lifts get better and you get stronger... Uh, mm -hmm. Don't go back the other way yet until you see that. Yeah. So wait till that happens, and then and then you can go the other. You direction. said your body fat was thirty percent. How did you test that? Um, so at my gym, I don't know exactly what it's called, but you hold it out in front of you and put your hands on the thing. Yeah, um, that's electronic, electronic impedance. impedance. Okay, yeah. I mean, not super I consistent. I did have a scale, but I don't think that that's accurate at all because it tells me I'm an athlete and. I don't think I'm an athlete yet. Yeah. So I was like, I don't think that's right. You know what? Do, <laughs> do, do this. Do this. Use strength. So strength, body weight, and circumference measurements. Okay. okay. Use those three things. Don't focus on just one. 
Because your okay. weight may go up, but then you may notice on circumference measurements, things are moving. Like, wow, my butt grew, but my waist shrank. Yep. Okay, right. it looks like I built muscle. Use those three things. You can use electronic impedance too. Just make sure you do it at the same time each time, same time of day, similar amount of water and food, same time during your cycle, because they can be thrown off quite a bit by, you know, by, by different factors. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right. That's great. Well, thanks Thank for you guys. Me. You got it. All right. Yeah, that big study that came out is so funny, right? So people are taking it and running with it in the wrong direction. So I'm seeing all these posts now that are saying, mm. literally, these are the idiots that are like, you know, working out is toxic and, you know, oh fat phobia. They're saying literally, see, working out is a waste of time. <laughs> yeah, just give up. It's like, yeah. oh God, that's not at all what the study <laughs> said. First of all, exercise, if you don't lose weight, just exercising has significant impacts, positive ones on your health both physical and mental health. So even if you don't lose a pound, mm -hmm. just moving more is so profound in terms of improving your health. But then number two, it doesn't address what we talk about, which is yeah. increasing lean body mass, body getting your metabolism to speed up. I know we have so much work to do still when trainers and coaches are still telling people to do stuff like this. It's crazy. I know. It's yeah. so like, uh, the fact that you are training people and, and you're teaching like this is like, blows my mind, you know? Yeah. It's, it's very entry level thinking. That's it. Look, if you like Mind Pump, you'll love our workouts that we give away every single week. Go to Mind Pump Media on Instagram for less than $5 a month. You can get a workout every single week set up for you. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Stefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 